The key characteristic of nitrogen in amines is its unshared electron pair. That unshared pair dictates the chemistry of amines. When that pair is used to form a bond with a proton, we say the amine is a base. When that pair is used to form a bond with carbon, we say it's a nucleophile. Amines have two general ways of acting as a nucleophile. First, forming a bond with carbon can displace a leaving group. And in the second way, as the bond formed with carbon, it can actually add to a double bond. A pi bond with the oxygen breaks. There are important examples of both of these that I'd like to show you. First and foremost, we think of amine nucleophiles reacting with alkyl halides. This forms a nitrogen-carbon bond. The halide is the leaving group, but epoxides offer an interesting alternative. Because the three-membered ring is strained, that nucleophile can open that three-membered ring by reacting with carbon and breaking that carbon-oxygen bond. In this case, the oxygen itself is the leaving group, and there are two general types of addition reactions to carbonyl that I want you to look at. First is with aldehydes and ketones, where the nucleophile adds to the carbonyl. And once a proton is transferred, it makes a carbonyl amine, a carbon that has an amine and a hydroxyl group attached to the same carbon. As I'll show you soon, this intermediate reacts further to lose water. And there, there's a reaction with carboxylic acid derivatives. That amine reacts at carbonyl. It adds to the carbon as the pi bond to the oxygen is broken. And ultimately, after this chloride is lost, we make a carboxylic acid derivative, an amide. So we have these four types of reactions to look at, and let me talk about each one of them, one at a time. The reaction of amines with alkyl halides is an SN2 reaction where we have direct displacement of the leaving group. Attack at carbon, loss of halide. This SN2 reaction mechanism tells us something about the alkyl halide. This guy should be primary and cannot be tertiary. Tertiary substrates simply do not undergo SN2 reactions. And notice something interesting here. Primary amines react to make secondary amines. Secondary amines react to make tertiary amines. And tertiary amines even react to make quaternary ammonium salts. Does this give you some idea about a limitation for these reactions? If we're making a secondary amine by using a primary amine, then secondary amines react with this reaction too. You can tell that we're going to have some tertiary amine as the byproduct. And we might even have some quaternary ammonium salt as a byproduct. So a complicating factor when we use alkyl halides to react with amines to make other amines is mixtures of products. When amines react with epoxides, it's essentially an SN2 type of reaction. And importantly, it puts an amino group at one carbon and a hydroxyl group at another carbon, adjacent to it. If you want these two functional groups to be next to each other, using an epoxide with amine is a really good idea. Furthermore, there are stereochemical consequences to this that can be really useful. Take a look. This is an SN2 type of reaction. So the nucleophile approaches on the less substituted carbon from the back side, opening like this. So the stereochemical result we'll get will have these two groups in an anti-relationship to each other. The stereochemistry that I put the box around will be unchanged the stereochemistry at this center will be inverted. The nitrogen is the less substituted carbon, which is typical of SN2 reactions. The final step in this reaction requires two proton transfers. Something will have to act as a base to take off this proton, and something will have to act as an acid to provide a proton to the hydroxyl group. This might be solvent or a byproduct of the reaction. It's really immaterial. So, the take home message is, Amines react with epoxides. They react at the less substituted carbon with inversion of configuration. The product has a hydroxyl group and amino group on adjacent carbons, and the reaction is stereospecific. The initial product when an amine adds to a carbonyl group is this carbonyl amine as I've shown here. But as I mentioned, this intermediate undergoes dehydration. And the product of dehydration depends on whether we're starting with a primary amine or a secondary amine. Let's look at the primary amine first. When this amine nucleophile adds to carbonyl as an aldehyde or a ketone, in a reversible reaction, the initial formation of product looks like this. 
The nitrogen has a positive charge and the oxygen has a negative charge. Rapidly, in a second and third steps, there are proton transfers. To donate a proton to the oxygen, that becomes a hydroxyl group, and accept a proton from the nitrogen, that becomes neutral. And we have the carbonyl amine as an intermediate. Under the reaction conditions, which are typically acidic, the hydroxyl group can be protonated. And when it is, it becomes a good leaving group. And with the loss of water, we form a cation. This cation can become stable if it loses a hydrogen from an adjacent atom. Now that could be a carbon atom or it could be a nitrogen atom. But when the nucleophile is a primary amine, it's the nitrogen that loses the hydrogen. So in a final step, we make a compound called an imine. Overall, you see that this mechanistic sequence transforms this pair of reactions, a primary amine and aldehyde or ketone, to make an imine. Now let's look at the reaction with secondary amines. And I'll tell you right now that the overall product is different. Secondary amines make enamines. Take a look. The reaction starts out in the very same way. Nucleophile adds to carbonyl. Equilibrium reaction. We have an initial product that needs two proton transfers. The oxygen picks up a hydrogen and the nitrogen loses a proton. We form a carbonylamine intermediate. Like we saw before, the hydroxyl group can be protonated and when it is, it becomes a very good leaving group. After all, it's just water. And the loss of water makes a carbocation again, like we saw before. Only now on this nitrogen, neither one of these is a hydrogen. So it's not possible to form an imine. Under those conditions, the proton is lost from an adjacent carbon. And the compound that's formed is something called an enamine, an alkene amine. The net overall effect of this reaction mechanism is to transform a secondary amine plus an aldehyde or ketone into an enamine. If the initial steps are the same, whether it's a primary amine or a secondary amine. But at the very end, the location of the proton that's lost determines which of the two types of structures we get. And finally, an amine adds to the carbonyl of carboxylic acid derivatives. When that happens, the reaction takes a different path. The derivative could be an acid chloride, as I've shown here. Or we could have a different leaving group. Carboxylic acid anhydrides also work. I've highlighted in blue the atoms that will be leaving either a chloride or a carboxylate. The initial step of the reaction is straight addition to carbonyl, as we saw for aldehydes and ketones. This is a reversible reaction that forms an alkoxide and a protonated nitrogen as an intermediate. But this guy won't be stable and it will rapidly lose chloride. This reforms the carbonyl and gives us a product that's protonated. The chloride that's lost can take a proton off of that nitrogen. that gives us our final product. In either case, whether we start with acid chlorides or acid anhydrides, amines react rapidly and effectively and give very good yields of the amide. Notice that this reaction will work with primary amines and secondary amines, not tertiary amines, because we must have a hydrogen to lose. And both primary and secondary amines give very good yields whether they react with acid chlorides or acid anhydrides to make an amide.